That's my maple. <laughs> I, I'm just messing with you. Help yourself, I brought him in. Uh, we're new here with the new HR consultants. They have a lot of names, but they're really union busters. They're here to convince workers that they don't need a contract, even though they signed one when the company hired them. Their type usually makes big money, up to $600 an hour. As soon as a petition to organize was filed with NLRB, their firm was on the move to undermine unionizing efforts. They get paid more, so the workers won't. I've worked on campaigns where union busters made over a quarter of a million dollars, all for just a few weeks' work. They have two strategies, create division and spread misinformation. Their plan of attack is simple, divide and conquer. First, they go after everyone in what are called captive audience meetings. Then they divide the workers into smaller groups. And finally, they'll target individuals, sowing doubt, undermining unity. It's about control. When workers form a union, employers lose complete control over the workforce. The workers gain rights and a voice. The owner's no longer a dictator. They have to negotiate with you on wages and work conditions, and you are protected by a contract. Union membership pays. You gotta go to some meet they just call. Right. What's this meeting about anyway? I don't know. You know, how do they expect us to hit quarter if they keep pulling us off the floor like this? Absolutely. These are all very valid concerns. The company wants to make things better. You're all like family here. Yes, in captive audience meetings, unions are portrayed as outsiders, interfering in what the company would like you to believe is an equal relationship. Yet they can fire workers for any reason or no reason at all. Is that equal? They didn't know all the problems you've been having, but change is coming. You just have to give them another chance. We didn't know how you felt about this. You know how unions thrive? off of the dollars of their members. I've seen it. We infiltrate nothing. Employees call us first to help them. You only pay dues after you have a signed labor contract and applied for membership. While we negotiate for your wages and benefits, you pay zero, nothing. And even then, a majority of workers has to vote to accept the new contract. Paying union dues is not a cost, but an investment. Union workers stand to make hundreds more in weekly earnings. You'll have access to health coverage and pension plans. Union dues are tax deductible. Even things like discounts on your cell phone and scholarship opportunities and many other options that save you, the worker, more money in the long run. If the union doesn't get what it wants, it can force you out on strike, and then you've got nothing. How many of you have house payments? Families? Anyone expecting newborns? The company has essentially turned over all their power to the union busters. They know the supervisors are the first line of defense, and they use every dirty trick, even illegal ones. They're told to do whatever it takes. How many you got so far? I got three more after this one. What's up? I hear you got a little one on the way. Yeah, three months. Ah, it's amazing how much things can change in three months. More even. Hey, you think about this vote coming up on Friday. Benefits, wages gone like that. Whole staff laid off because the union can't decide on a contract. <laughs> we lose our benefits, what are you gonna do? Union busters often say, you'll start from scratch that you could lose everything, but the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled 
Once employees choose a union, their employer cannot make any changes to wages, benefits, or other terms of employment without bargaining with the employee's union. When an employer threatens loss of existing benefits, they're lying. The law says they must bargain in good faith. Saying the Boilermakers can force you out on strike is another lie. Striking is a big deal. It's a last resort. Over 99% of Boilermaker contracts are resolved without a strike. That includes first contracts. Boilermakers can't force you to strike. It's a vote of the members at the local level, the people you work with. That's written in the Boilermaker Constitution. The company may warn of repercussions, job loss, even closure, but such threats put into action are illegal. You think about your family when you vote this Friday. The goal is simple, to scare the worker into voting against their union, their voice. All of a sudden, the company will seem to care about what you think and how you feel. It's funny how they start to care once the workers talk about forming a union. The union wants the company to be successful and profitable and share those gains with you, the workers. For years, union members have taken home almost $200 more a week compared to the non-union workers in their industry. You deserve a fair share of the wealth you help create. Hope I'll see you tonight. Yeah, maybe. You have the right to form, join, and support a union. That's in the National Labor Relations Act. Now, I used to work full-time in a factory, just like the rest of you guys. I know the benefits of working in a union environment. And we were contacted by some of your coworkers to help you guys make some positive changes at the workplace. Without a union, management can change the rules. Day to day, person to person, they're in charge. But if you form a union, you level the playing field, everybody wins with great benefits, good wages, good working conditions. It's not just a buddy system for a selected few. Are there any questions? Yeah, look, this all sounds great, but I've heard a lot of things this week, from union dues to contracts disputes, strikes and closures. You know, how do we know that you're not just like them? You know, how do we know that you're any different than the company we answered to already? I'm glad you asked. That's exactly what the company wants you to believe. That's why they don't let us into their meetings with you at work. Then we can't answer your questions and concerns. This is why we go out and make house visits and pass out leaflets. We're always courteous to you and your neighbors, and we want you to make an informed decision come election day. No organization is perfect. Hell, this country isn't perfect. That's why we elect leaders and can amend our union constitution because nothing is perfect. The beauty of starting a union is that you all are in charge. If you don't like the way things are going, you can run for a local lodge officer position. The beauty of starting a union is that you all are in charge. Does your company hold elections? Can you vote for your CEO and have a say in their salary? When was the last time you voted on the employee handbook? Do they consider your opinion about wages and benefits and overtime? The election process is conducted by a representative of the federal government. Company management and union representatives are not allowed in or near the voting area when the polls are open. You do not put your name anywhere on the ballot, so your vote remains anonymous. Come election day, this will probably be the first time you've ever voted for anything at that company. With forming your union, you continue to have that vote and that power to bring about change. You have a contract for just about everything in your life, your home, your car, your cell phone. Why not for your wages, benefits, and working conditions? Now, this is a right you all have. Whether you choose to exercise that right is up to you. Just remember, when you don't exercise your rights, you lose them. The union buster will pull out all the stops 
He and management will say and do literally anything. And they'll single out those they think can be intimidated. And they'll isolate those that speak up. The meetings may even turn into one-on-one -on -one meetings designed to scare workers into voting against their own interests. We've got to protect and support each other. It's what forming a union is all about. And when you guys join the Boilermakers, you join a union you can be proud of. Happy Friday. Big day ahead, huh? Big day. You know this union thing, I don't know. Do you know which way you're gonna vote? You know what? I'm gonna vote the way that's best for me and my family. That's the way I'm gonna vote. Thanks. Last but not least. That looks like everybody on my list. So, okay. Looks like we're done here. My dad worked in private, private sector all of his life, and I didn't really have any union experience prior to becoming unionized with the Boilermakers. A lot of people have the mindset that the union reached out and said, hey, listen, let us tell you what we can do for you, and that's not the case. We reached out to the Boilermakers and say, listen, we need some help. We can't do this alone and what, help, help us. What can you do for us to move us through this process? So when we reached out to your organizers, Jody and Bobby, then they come and they educate you on what needs to happen next or what the process entails. When the union busters come in, they told us, they said, you know, the 7% of America is unionized and they're destroying the workforce. They're gonna cause you to go on strike. They're gonna cause you to have plant shutdowns and all these things that are uncalled for. And they're gonna slow business down. In turn, we're gonna lay people off. And we realized, uh, come out later, because public information that they spent $175,000 on union buses over two months, which equated, we broke it down to like $1,000 an hour or something ridiculous. And we're talking, hey, we haven't got a raise in two years and we're asking for a quarter an hour here. And you guys are paying these guys a quarter million dollars to come down for two months. So it just kind of fueled the fire. There's, there's gotta be some benefit in here for us that you don't want us to have, otherwise you wouldn't pay these guys to be here to tell us the opposite, the, the negative about it. We would have a meeting with the union busters during the day, and that evening we would go tell Jody and Bobby, or call them even if they weren't in the in the workplace. We'd say, listen, this is, what they're, this is what we're being told, can you enlighten us on this? And they would tell us either that's accurate or it's not. Absolutely, the supervisors are getting coached. And they would come down on the floor and they, and they would write out ask you how you were voting. They can't, of course, they can't tell you which way to vote, but they would always say, hey, I hope you make the right decision. And then we question them, well, if this is how you feel about it, let's let our organizers from the union come in. You guys can sit on the opposite side of the table and let's talk about it. Let's hear you guys discuss it because you want us to be educated. However, you're only giving us half of the education. You're not showing us both sides of the table. I can't tell you how many supervisors I had when I was wearing a Vote Yes shirt. They would combine and say, hey, I really hope you reevaluate your decision you're making here because this is going to affect all of us, not just you solely. And my response to that was, well, of course, I know this is going to affect all of us. I'm trying to do you guys something positive here. You just might not know it yet. But as it went on, they kind of got wore down by our questions and our responses. And they realized that we were more educated than they originally thought. The vote was 100 to 88. Everybody welcomed us with open arms. We received such a warm welcome, handshakes, hugs from everybody. Hey man, we're proud of you guys. And it was incredible to see that. We're very close on the contract and we plan to vote very soon within the next several weeks. I was nominated and elected president of the local and I have a great team with me. And I was aware of the positive things we were doing. There's no more unfair practices and anything that we do feel is unfair, we question it and grieve it and it's handled accordingly. We're seeing a lot more answers to our questions and we're not running into near as many issues of people not being treated fairly. We, we knew we had done something great. However, we just didn't realize how great it was. We've made a step to the future, not only to organize in the South, but also to organize in a right to work state. But we're here as the Boilermakers and all the other unions across America is to take our middle class back. Absolutely, I think it was worth it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done anything different if I could do it again.